Oh, hey there. How's it going? How's life? So I'm here to tell you about this drug called meth, or more common, commonly known as crank ice. Go fast. Zip. Zang. Crystal. She's nitty. Junk. Gack. Jeeve. Tick bomb. Chalk. Rock. Glass. Crunk. Frankenstein. It was created in 1887 as amphetamine and was used to treat asthma, hay fever, and colds. But in 1893, the Japanese synthesized the deadly substance called methamphetamine, whose structure is similar to a neurotransmitter. But you see, the only difference between the two is that meth is water-soluble, so it can easily enter the body and work its magic. Despite its harmful qualities, it can be used for illegal medicinal purposes to treat narcolepsy, ADHD, obesity, and depression. During World War II, governments gave meth to their soldiers to keep them alert, awake, and to boost endurance. But during the 60s, the hippies started using it to get high, and it became much more potent and much more addictive. Here's an example of what meth does to your brain. I'm a brain. We're meth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Meth is made from ephedrine. Ephedrine is a stimulant, appetite suppressant, concentration aid, and decongestant that is commonly found in Sudafed, Claritin, and other over-the-counter medications. Its molecular structure is very similar to methamphetamine. The only difference is that there is a hydroxide attached to one of the carbons. It is neutralized by adding acid, and the combined hydrogen and hydroxide form water. In the process, an alkene is formed. This alkene is separated from the rest of the mixture using distillation. Platinum and hydrogen gas are added to break the double bonds in the alkene. The rest of the process is purifying the meth. The structure of the final product is similar to neurotransmitters. It binds to nerve receptors and confuses the brain, tricking it into thinking that it is a neurotransmitter. This allows it to make the brain do what it wants. Meth causes a surge of dopamine to the brain. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter that relays information in the brain related to movement, thought, and emotions. Meth can be smoked, snorted, ingested, or injected, and the surge of dopamine will cause the feeling of euphoria that meth users crave. But the higher the high, the lower the low, and abusers are usually left wanting more. Another neurotransmitter affected by meth is the serotonin synapsis. Serotonin controls sleep, appetite, mood, sexual behavior, and memory. Its chemical structure is similar to hallucinogens. Meth reduces serotonin production, which can cause a person to become violent, anxious, depressed, and impulsive. It also slowly kills the synapses, and it can never be revived. Therefore, a person could live with depression and guilt for the rest of their lives. Finally, epinephrine, more commonly known as adrenaline, is produced with the use of meth. Similar to dopamine, the body is prevented from reabsorbing and recycling this adrenaline, resulting in the rush you experience. Normally, when a person experiences pleasure, dopamine is released from a neurotransmitter to another. The chemical is recycled when the sensation has passed and it returns to the synaptic vessel. But when using meth, the receptor is blocked and the dopamine can't return to the vessel, causing a chemical buildup. The rush of dopamine causes the euphoria that can last up to 14 hours, but this rush will also cause a depression that will last until the next use. This constant search for euphoria causes triggers to use in everyday life. It's a beautiful day and I'm walking around the neighborhood. Doo -doo. Doo -doo. That's a pretty flower pot. Yeah, oh, hmm. Well, it's a beautiful day, isn't it? It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Do tree. Oh, hmm. I'm just, I'm just gonna keep going. Yeah, no. that's, that's a nice house. Um, yeah. Oh. Uh, Oh my god. <laughs> the
After fluctuating states of highs and lows, meth users come to rely more and more on the drug just to feel normal again. Because of this, users begin to see common things as reminders of that good sensation. What was once fun and enjoyable now causes anxiety and desperation and has become an addiction. During the use of this drug, you will experience a euphoric sensation. Long-term effects include, but are not limited to, mood instability from the constant damage to the neurotransmitters, malnutrition from a stopped metabolism, and destruction of serotonin resulting in decreased appetite, a deficient immune system, symptoms of Parkinson's, which is a movement disorder caused by the lack of dopamine production, and meth mouth, or rotting teeth from poor oral hygiene, grinding teeth, and dry mouth. Ultimately, constant meth use can resolve in death, usually from stroke caused by clotting, by hypothermia, and cardiac failure. I cleaned my room until I got high. <laughs> I was gonna get up and find the broom, but then I got high. Uh, la -da, my room da -da -da. is still messed up, and I know why. Why, man? Yeah, hey, cause I got high. Yeah. Because I got high. Hell because yeah. I got high. La -da 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 -da. Wait, 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 wait. Ah! <laughs> no, 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 no. There's a car! <laughs> Dopamine is released from one neutral transmitter. Okay. 